I'm Jonathan Knight and this is Eagle Sports Insiders. We got a fully packed show for you here today and let's get going. Well, welcome back for another edition of Eagle Sports Insiders. I'm Jonathan Knight, and well, this is a strange face here next to me, all joining me and filling in today while Michael Kermy is out sick and Evan Hensley is out doing whatever he does in the world of sports. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, David Pierce Anderson, joining me here today. It's uh, we got a good show here, and let's get it going. You know, the EMU men's basketball team, they are on a three-game road skid. They lost at home two weeks, about a week and a half ago on Tuesday night to Kent State, which a game they should have won. They went on the road and they took on a tough NIU team that was a game that we needed to win on the road and needed that win going in conference play and in MAC play. You know, the guys seem like they struggled a little bit in this game and they just seem like they're on a downward spiral. Seems like Coach Murphy can't get the guys back to where they need to be since they faced Kent State. Uh, thoughts on this game against NIU and uh, what the guys need to do going forward? I think this was a pretty interesting game. You know, you look at it and they relied heavily on the three ball. Mm -hmm. um, you look in the first half and they were almost at 60% shooting for three. That is very good. Uh, but then second half dropped off the face of the earth. It was 25%. And that's not how you, you're going to win a ball game. I think three ball is a tough way to live mm -hmm. because you are, it's a home run ball. You're relying on that to be consistent. And if it works out, you know, you get three points on the board, but it's tough. And it showed in the 81 69 loss, you know, they, it just wasn't clicking for them. Willie Mangum led uh, Eastern with 17 points. And, you know, is that your top score? It's not too much, honestly. No, no. And when you, when you see a, you know, Willie, a guy that's normally used to putting up 20 plus mm -hmm. points in a game and isn't doing that, and one of their leading scorers, you know, throughout the season, he likes to carry the team along. You know, where is James Thompson? Where is the big man that usually they're the tough guy that he is? You know, where are the other guys that need to step up in this game? If you look at the rest of it, James Thompson only had 12 points. He played 36 minutes. Um, Ty Tony coming back off that knee injury. Injury, he only had 12 points, you know, and these guys are putting up the minutes, but they're not putting up the points. Um, you know, you look at Thompson's game, and he didn't have a 2020 game. It no. It wasn't like the lights out game he had a few weeks ago, but he still put together a consistent, a very good game. He had 12 points, seven boards, three assists, and a block. Mm -hmm. Like, you're getting that out of your big man. That's a good game, but it's tough to rely on a center as your core, core of the team. Yes. You need a playmaker. Yes. And... No, we don't have that guy stepping up. Where, That's the real problem. where is that guy? Where is the Tim Bond? Where is your Ray Lee? You know, these guys that need to step it up, and they're just not progressing and doing so. And they let that keep progressing going on. Then they came home. They had two days to regroup and get ready to go. And then they had the battle against Toledo, a rival team that last year they swept them. And when I mean swept, they went down to Toledo and played down there. It's a tough place to put. Tough place to play, sorry. And if you've never been down there and seen a game, it's loud. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about a place that's loud for college, it's, it's a loud place there. Ty Tony only had 13 points that game. And that's another game they lost. 73-57 that they lost to Toledo. It seemed like the Rockets just clipped the wings of the Eagles and they sent them back home up 23. It was a long 45-minute drive for the Eagles in this game. Yeah, I, I totally agree. You know, 73-57 as a final. It looks like it was a landslide. And realistically, the Eagles didn't play that great. You know, James Thompson, this was a game where he didn't get a double-double. He was close. He had 9 points, 11 boards. Uh, but he said Ty Tony is your lead, leading scorer with 13 points. Big thing that stood out for me in this game, and we mentioned about not having a playmaker, Ray Lee played 20 minutes, had zero points. That is, that is a lot of time coming out of a, a good player, a guy that you rely on, and 
you know, he's not performing. We need a mm -hmm. Tim Bond to step up, yep. and we need a Ray Lee to step up, start making plays, because you cannot rely on James Thompson to do that. That's great. Let's take a look real quick. We're going to take a look at the men's standings here, and we're going to really look at the West. Look at, we were talking about this before we went on air, look at Central Michigan. They started mm -hmm. off the season pretty slow, yeah. but they got that star, the big star there at yeah. Central, Who's just showing up? Right. And that's uh, Marcus King. Marcus King. The yeah. guy is just unphenomenal. He put up 26, 26 points when they faced Eastern the two days after New Year's on the 3rd of January here at the Convocation yeah. Center. And then we, we were both there. We were mm -hmm. there for that game. He only had 26 points. Since then, he has not had anything less than that. Yeah. And he had that 58-point yeah. game just three weeks ago against Miami. Well, who are we to say you only had 26? We're talking about our leading scorer, Ty Tony, with 13. But that's the thing is, is that, you know, you it's, look at these guys. It's in comparison. This guy has gone off well, I mean, since he then. Has. And they really needed that because, like, you, they were kind of sluggish. But he's really turned it on, and that's how they have jumped so far That's in the right. standings. Can we go ahead and put the uh, standings back up real quick, guys? I want to look at that just a tad bit more, please. Um, if I remember correctly on the stats, uh, that was the score there. All right, so then we go ahead and we look at Ball State there. Ball State's at 5-9, and nine, and then Northern Illinois at 15-9, at, uh, and, and Northern Illinois at 14-10. and 10. Mm -hmm. You know, Eastern Michigan really cannot – they got these guys coming up at home. They got Ball State. They got Northern Illinois. They go on the road to Central coming up here shortly – you can't, you're really now playing for the overall. It's mm -hmm. not about max standings. It's not mm -hmm. about where you are in, in conference now, because now mm -hmm. when you're looking at it, you're focusing on the fact is, where will you be seated mm -hmm. going into the MAC conference tournament here coming yeah. up in just three short weeks? Yeah. You know, do you <clears throat> want to be that team that has to go on the road and play that? Tuesday night, Monday night game on right. the road before you go to Cleveland? Well, they've had a tough time going on the road. Um, you see them in Toledo, and, you know, they kind of got wiped. The, the floor got wiped with them uh, over there, so you definitely don't want to go on the road. Well, it's, well, it's really interesting, though, because you look at the West Division, they're not really – they're not – they don't have that powerhouse. No. You look Akron, 20-4. and four. You know, that's a team that's been carrying their weight, <clears> and they've really, you know – they're like, yeah, we're, we're the real, we are the real deal mm -hmm. over here. And there's really nothing in that, so it's really anybody's game. But EMU 13 and 11, they're kind of falling back now, and it's really, it's going to be tough for them, because especially because they've been, haven't been playing great ball lately, uh, three-game losing streak. No, and that's and, and that is the that's the tough part about it is is that you've lost three straight to teams that you wouldn't expect mm -hmm. to lose, especially to Toledo. Losing that game down to Toledo there, that was a game t this past Tuesday night that you couldn't really afford to lose and they look like crap you know my biggest thing that I have is is where what is coach Murphy doing and what does he need to do to get done to get these guys back on track going into this weekend's game tomorrow night ESPNU nationally televised you play like you did on Tuesday well you know what they're gonna do and they're gonna they're gonna flip ESPN's gonna put them right back to ESPN <laughs> three. Yeah. You cannot play like this on national television at home. Yeah. You want to get back to it. You have the Akron you have Akron Zips at home mm -hmm. Friday night. It's a big big game that you must win. This yeah. is a game you have to win. Well, I mean, you're talking about go back to ESPN three. That's okay because then we get more work, right? No, I'm just gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Um, but, yeah, you know, it's tough because it's it's very difficult to handle all of these players. There's a lot of talent on the team. We're not going to hide that. James Thompson, Tim Bond. Ray Lee, they're all very talented, but how mm -hmm. do they mesh together? And I think that's a little bit of the problem right now. They're not playing as a team, um, kind of going out on their own way. Like we talked about, three-pointers, that's kind of their M.O. It's going to be tough to, to rally that together and this late in the season and be like, we got to start playing as a team because we're almost past that point. Oh, and you are. Yeah, I'm interested to see how Murphy – Tries to bring it together, but it might be a little bit tough right now. Is this you're going into this game to face the number one team mm -hmm. in the MAC? Mm -hmm. They're they're ten and one in conference, twenty and four. This is a team yeah. last year that we str we struggled against a little bit, and you know you you I guess I don't know what the answer is. What does Murphy have to do? Who's got to step up? Somebody has to step up going into this game t tomorrow night, yeah. national televised. It's a big game, like I said, and you know what? It, Somebody has to step up. I don't care if it's Ray, Ray Lee, if it's James Thompson, Tim Bond. Somebody must step up because this is a game you have to win. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, it's there's no question about it. There's no hiding it. But a couple weeks ago, we saw when Eastern played Akron, and 
weren't too far behind. It was a 70 to 63 game. Mm -hmm. um, that's not that's not bad against a 20 no. and four uh, no. team. But I really think maybe with ESPNU there, maybe they're kind of <laughs> maybe they're like, all right, we're going to show them who's boss, and they might come out the bright lights. Maybe they'll play a little bit better, up their game a little bit more. That's what I'm hoping. Maybe they they see the the big lights and the big names there. They're like, all right, we're gonna we're gonna show them who's boss. Do, do you do you think Friday night we're gonna have a packed sold out convocation center? Do you think we might actually see them remove the tarps from yeah. the upper level and uh, fill out that place? That'd or? be, be kind of cool. Um, we haven't seen one in a we're, long we're time. It's tough to say. I think if you add all of our attendance this year, that might fill the crowd. <laughs> that might um, fill the crowd for one game. Um, but you know, I would I really urge everyone to go out. They're a fun basketball team. You know, it's it's basketball. Who doesn't like watching it? So, Everybody loves right. basketball. I would strongly urge you guys to go out. It's going to be a good game, uh, nonetheless, and support the team. Maybe that's what they need. They need you guys you know out there. That, yeah. I will tell you, that's <laughs> what they need you to do. All right, we're going to take a quick short break. When we come back, we're going to get into some NBA action. As last night, there were some crazy games. We'll be back here in just a minute on Eagle Sports Insiders. This day and age of compromised accounts and data breaches, having a strong password is not enough to keep you and your personal information safe. Someone who steals your password could gain access to all your data with nothing to stop them. The Eagle Security Package offers Duo, a tool that provides an additional layer of security to your online accounts through two-factor authentication. This means Duo not only uses something you know, your password, but also something you have access to, such as your mobile device. Duo's two-factor authentication gives you the power to keep your data safe, even if your password is lost. Once Duo is set up, you can access protected sites with your login credentials like you normally would, but it will now be preceded by a message sent to your mobile device prompting you to accept or deny the login. If it's you who logged in, hit the green button to accept it, but if it's not you, hit the red button to deny it. By doing so, this extra step will take a forefront stance at protecting your online accounts from being compromised or breached, and you'll know right away if an attempt was made. For more information about Duo, please visit tiny.image.edu forward slash duo. Well, welcome back to Eagle Sports Insiders. David Pierce Anderson joining me. I appreciate you taking the time out today, yeah. joy, filling in here for you know Michael Kermy. He's out sick. He's yeah. at home resting. And like we said, Evan Hensley's out covering the sports like he does yeah. always. So we'll get into NBA here in just a minute. Let's talk about big night in college hoops tonight. Yeah. One of the biggest games of all time. We ha it happened earlier in the week, but we got a bigger game this week. UNC taking on Duke. Mm -hmm. It's eight versus 18, mm -hmm. two of the biggest teams. This rivalry ha is so rich. It's as rich as the game that went yeah. on Tuesday night, but Michigan just sent little brother home. Right, so we don't right. really care about right. little brother Michigan anymore. Let's get into UNC and Duke. Yeah. This, the, man, there's some rich history in this game. Well, it's, it's one of the classic rivalries it when is. you look at all of sports. Um, you mentioned 18 and eight. It's not really, it doesn't look like it's got that much heat towards it, but you know, it's the two teams, Duke and uh, North Carolina. What really was interesting, you showed me the stat earlier. I did. Mind boggling. They've played, uh, well, I guess, both of their records against each other 48 and 48. How many point totals do they have uh, in grand uh, total in those and games? This is a huge number. It's amazing. 7,437 points for Duke, 7,437 points for North Carolina. I mean, that's ridiculous. They have the same record with the same amount of points in their history of playing each other. And I think that's really the story we're looking at. Like, they have been evenly matched this whole way. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, you know, it's, like you said, one of the greatest games ever. That might, that's, that's got a lot to it. You really think this could be one of the greatest ever? I, I really do. When you look at these two teams and look at the, the franchises of these, both these universities and the way that these teams play and how much, you know, sure, Duke is having a, a rough season, mm -hmm. you know, they're known as the underdogs when they, if they start out rough, they right. sneak into the tournament and they sneak through and they're one of those teams that are known for doing things like yeah. this. We've seen a lot of teams do this. Um, it's, I just love the history behind this. This yeah. is one of those matchups that you just, you want to sit down and you want to watch and you love seeing these two teams battle it. The arenas are going to be filled, it's going to be loud, it's going to be crazy and it's it's one of the very enjoyable matchups that we they get to watch. Yeah. Well, one final thought on it. You know, I really think uh, Duke's Grayson Allen. He's got to step up, and he's had that he's rough year, mm -hmm. getting suspended, kicking all these guys, whatever. <clears throat> um, but you know, he, he had 20 points, 21 points averaged in his sophomore year. That was last year, and now he's got about 15. You know, that that's. 
that's a real steep drop off. So I think he's hurting the team really by not, uh, you know, going that whatever's going on with him in life. Why has he got to be kicking these people on the field or? Court, you know what I mean. I don't, I don't get it. I don't it's get like it. It's like it's. I feel like he uh, he watched too much yeah. wrestling as right. a kid. Or maybe he thinks he's on the field and it's football, and he is. He thinks he's the punter or something. I don't know. <laughs> but I think he's really got to cool it down, and that's probably been part of Duke's struggle this year, is um, because he's been so erratic on the court. Uh, you know, that's one of their stars' players. It is. Yeah. It is. All right. Well, a few other games that are going on tonight. We got Oregon, number five Oregon taking on number 10 UCLA. This is a big matchup real quick. Who do you like in this matchup for Pac-12 play tonight? Well, I like Oregon's jersey, so I'm going to go with them. You're going to go with the Ducks. <laughs> you know what? I'll take the Bruins there just because there of that. All right, let's get into some NBA and all the craziness that's been going on in the yeah. NBA. Last night I watched the Clippers' uh, Knicks game, and, you know, there's a lot of commotion going on in the game and whatnot, but at this whole thing wrapping around Carmelo, mm -hmm. you know, I really want to get your thoughts on this. Do you think it's time for Melo to hang up the Knicks jersey, release that no trade clause that he has, and let himself be traded to a different team? Well, you know, I mean, Melo's been something else his whole career. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been a talented player. He's been a good scorer, but he's, I don't, he hasn't put it together. He had the team this year. This was a solid team. And Got Derek Rosen. Yeah, yeah, they just fallen short again. Um, you know, I'm not a big LeBron James fan, and I don't like him going to the media <clears throat> and saying, I want Melo. Um, so I got a problem with that. Um, and, you know, it's also this dream team mentality that every team LeBron has to play on, he's got to have every single all-star on that, that squad. You need to have the dream team to win. Well, um, I mean, look you at Houston, don't. Houston, look at look at Oakland, the, in Oklahoma this year. Maybe this day and age you do, but you look at the Pistons in 04. I know it's been a long time but since that, that. But that wasn't considered a dream team. That, it that, was. That's that what was, I'm saying. That was just a random team of guys yeah. that randomly fell together. They were put together, yeah. and it seems like, you know, I think Melo is too stuck in his head. Mm -hmm. I love Melo. I'm a big Carmelo okay. fan, and I know Evan and I and uh, Michael were talking about this, especially Michael, because he's a Clippers guy, and I was teasing him, you know, I have my Clippers, uh, yeah. my Knicks jersey yeah. on last night, and I know Michael's not here, and uh, he's at home sick, but hey, buddy, your team <laughs> snuck in there and won that game by the skin of their teeth, only because Melo decided to blow a three-pointer at the end of the <laughs> game, like he's used to doing. I think that it, I don't know, maybe it would be worth seeing him release that no-trade clause, get rid of the drama in New York, let him have a fresh start. Maybe if he went to a better team. I remember this time last year there were talks about him doing the same thing, mm -hmm. but going to the Pistons. Right, right. Remember the, I, do, I do remember hearing that, yeah. And I think at that point, it, this would have been a good fit for him. The Just, you know, Stan Van Gunny, he's a good coach. Mm -hmm. I think he could handle the way that it's coaching. The ownership here in in uh, Detroit would have been a good fit. I just don't think him going to Cleveland is the right fit. I don't think putting him there with LeBron and all that with a chance to, because we all know they're going to have the rematch. Yeah. But is it really worth it? Well, you know, Melo stayed true to New York. He, he's dedicated his time and he spent, spent uh, quality time, a lot of time over in New York. And, you know, looking at it now, I really envision him leaving because New York <coughs> has failed him for so long, quite honestly. Um, it'll be tough. I mean, it's not like you can go over to the Cavs and you're going to win there automatically. Correct. LeBron's a star. He's the best in the league right now. Um, you got Kyrie, great player. Kevin Love, great player. But if you're putting if you, in Melo in that, and you got to remember though, if Melo goes there, it's it's love for Melo. So mm. love goes to the Knicks. Melo comes here. Is it? Okay. I yeah, just yeah. I just. I don't know. I don't. I don't think that's the right fit. I see him maybe going to the Clippers. I could see him going to Oklahoma if they wanted mm. to trade for him and whatnot. But going, the, I mean, the Clippers would put them over the edge, give them a chance to battle with, you know, Golden State. Mm. But I really just don't think this is the right fit for him to go to Cleveland. So, I agree. I don't think he'll fit well in Cleveland. Do you think, though, that Melo is going to put these teams over the top? Do you think if he goes to OKC, then that's going to mesh? No, because it didn't, you know, you saw the same issues there. I don't, I don't see him. I see more issues coming with him right. going to Cleveland. I, I, right, me too. I think he is, he's got a lot of issues that follow him. Mm -hmm. He likes to sh shoot. I mean, that's not, no hiding that. He's a good scorer, but putting him with LeBron, putting him with Kyrie, those are some good scores there. 
Uh, putting him with Westbrook, that's another good score. It's, you, you know. I guess I wonder, though, is if you put him there, is, do you have this, do you see the same issues as going into um, what they thought was going to happen with him going, mm. when Kevin Durant went to, Oak, when went yeah. to the Warriors? Yeah. But it worked. Right. It ended up working, <laughs> though, and everybody thought that. So maybe it does work. Maybe him going to the Clippers or going to Cleveland, it does work. Maybe. I, I think the problem with Melo is he's had those issues in the past. All right. Yeah. We're going to take a quick short break, and we come back, we're going to wrap up the Super Bowl 51 and talk a little Tony Romo. We'll be right back. Are you an EMU student interested in getting a first-hand experience working at a radio station? Well, say no more. EMU offers a class through Eagle Radio that will thoroughly prepare you for a real-life experience. But first, you have to register for the class. Pick a date and a time slot. Then the world is yours. Eagle Radio allows you to be fully independent and customize your own show. Have real conversations about the news, celebrity gossip, update listeners about the weather, play a trivia game, it's your show. You're free to name your show whatever you want and play any edited music of your choice. If you love having heated debates and you feel your words need to be heard, then Eagle Radio is just for you. It was Super Bowl 51 just a few short days ago, and I know it's we're talking about it later in the week. Well, that's just what happens when you shoot a show on Thursday. But I tell you, one of the craziest, I'm sitting there on the couch, and I, tell you, I don't know where you were watching yeah. this at, but I'm sitting at the couch at my buddy's house, and I'm like, all right, it's 21 nothing. Game over. Mm -hmm. And then I think to myself, I'm going to go, but wait a second, wait a second. You got to remember who New England has. They got this guy, you know, name's Tom, last name Brady. I've heard of him. AKA the GOAT, <laughs> yeah, right. you know. Played at a school just down the street. Yeah. Somebody that they didn't realize that could actually play like this. Yeah. Sixth round draft pick. Played under a national championship team at Michigan, but nobody really cares about that. Uh -huh. What they care about is is the fact that man's got four rings. Now he can go like this. He's got five, and he went out there and he. I, I tell you, I don't know. Everybody said he went into the locker room and he just sat there. And I want to know whatever prayer Tom Brady said going into halftime. I don't know. Maybe it was like Looney Tune, you know, or not Looney Tune, Space Jam, where he drank the, uh, the, the Jordan juice right, right. and whatnot. Yeah. But I tell you, this game coming back after halftime, best comeback. 196 passing yards in the fourth quarter. But that wasn't the fourth quarter. That was in eight minutes in yeah. the fourth quarter to put it into overtime. Thoughts on this game? I need your thoughts. Well, I know I'm rambling yeah, about this. No, it's, it's one of those games that you do ramble about because it's just – Unbelievable! Like I was also on a couch, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> I was with my sweet mate. We had a little get together and everything, but it was it was a little bit relaxed and whatever. But um, I'm just I'm watching this game and it's 21 nothing and I'm like ah it's over that's too bad. But there was also a part of me sitting back. It's like well Tom Brady who knows? They started coming back and I'm like oh my gosh this is gonna happen. And then you know that Edelman catch. I cannot believe that still. The first thing I thought of was the helmet catch. Um, now, did you hear that that in. made, and I'm gonna, we'll have it next week on the show. I'm going yeah. to grab a copy of it. But did you hear that that catch made the cover of Super Bowl, of, of, of uh, Sports Illustrated, well, that, come in, that comes out tomorrow? I hope so. That was unbelievable. I, 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 I mean, don't understand how he caught it that. It looked difficult in slow motion, so I don't know how he did it at full speed in a game in the Super Bowl. <laughs> I, it, it was and they went back and, and they rewatched that yeah. several times to make sure that he caught it. Yeah. But it seems like because the Falcons guy's hand was mm. underneath his hand like yeah. this, but yeah. it's that it's, was a, it was great catch and just it, from that moment on it was I was like okay Patriots got it there's no question you know after that catch it was the momentum swing right there and it was yeah it was kind of an odd game um, I had some football squares and I had eight and zero and Patriots scored a touchdown to make it twenty eight to nine and extra point I get ten bucks. But freaking missed the extra point. I lost ten bucks on that. You so, know, yeah. okay. Let's let's talk about that real quick, though. So we go back to that missed field mm -hmm. goal. That missed field goal would have made it 29-28, and we would have never right. seen I overtime. Know. You got to remember that. People exactly. forgot about that. Well, you might. 
in that situation, you probably just go for the field goal and the tie. Yes. That's because if if that fails, you miss that two point conversion, mm -hmm. and you lose by one in the Super Bowl. Yep. You're gonna get some heat for that. So. Okay. But so I know I know what you're saying. Let me ask you this: Tom Brady or not Tom Brady? Aaron, Matt Ryan. All they have to do is kick a field goal. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? What's your thoughts when you're sitting there watching that and they don't kick that field goal? Well, or why they don't kick it? Why he keeps trying to pass it and run it? Yeah, and yeah. Just I know it was it was very perplexing. I'm going to guess experience. That was my the initial you think reaction. Matt Ryan just took over and said, "I want to do this." I at this point in, in the season, you wouldn't think so. You know, that's kind of like the coach should be saying that. And I know he's he hasn't had the front reins. Yeah. Right. He hasn't had the front reins at a Super Bowl, but he's been in the Super Bowl. Yes, several um, times. Right. So you'd think that, it, but I, that's, it's crazy. Like, why not? I don't know. It maybe it was, uh, wh what down were they on? I mean, was it? That was second. I think it was second yeah. going into third. But he, all he had yeah. to do was kick a field goal. Right. To put so, him over the hump, the game's over. Yeah. At that point, you kick a field goal, the game is over, but you never say the game is over with right. the go. Um, it's out of the ordinary to kick a field goal in that situation like with second down and everything, but for a Super Bowl, you probably should. When you look at well, the way Tom Brady, and I, and I guess I'll ask you this question, Dave. Tom Brady went 43 for 62, 466. Two TDs, one interception. He was sacked five times of 24. Is Tom Brady considered, I mean, he's considered the greatest of all time, greatest quarterback of all time. He has five rings. Yep. Do you think Tom Brady, is Tom Brady as an athlete greater than Michael Jordan? Um, is he at, they're at the same level. So, is he greater or are they still there? So here we go, you know, you have a discussion there's a lot of discussions we can go about that. Athleticism, no, obviously. I think as what he did for the sport, no. He's not on the level of Jordan. Jordan changed basketball. Brady dominated football for as long as he has been here. Um, he is the greatest in his craft. I'm, there's no taking that away from him. But um, it, it's tough to compare the two sports. It's tough to compare. A, you can't compare a defense defensive player and a quarterback. So mm -hmm. it's tough. He, I mean, you're not going to take anything away from him. He's the greatest quarterback of all time. How many more years do you think you could see Brady actually sticking this out? Did, I mean, you, he said he wants to play for a while. I yeah. mean, he's healthy as a horse. Yeah. He's, he looks, he, you know, he wants to continue doing this. A couple more years? I think he wants to fill out the next hand. So if you get in a fist fight, it's hurting. You got diamonds <laughs> going in your teeth from every direction. And then he, then, does that then put him over the hump? Well, then, yeah, than then I'll put him as the greatest than, ever. Than and, yeah, and he's my, yeah, for um, sure. You know, I'm very happy. I was very excited. I, you know, when this game just happened, I just, I'm just sitting there. I'm in awe. I'm like, wow. Mm. Okay, so you're telling me. And then when they got the coin flip and they won, and I'm like, okay, well, yeah. Tom Brady's just gonna go down the field, score a touchdown. I'd like to talk about that. I think okay. that is a horrible rule to end to basically the coin flip yes. decides the season, a, right? Okay, so they need to change overtime. Mm to the NCAA rules. And yeah. we're not gonna have a whole lot, well, we'll get into that yeah, in another right. show. We'll, we'll really have to break that down because that's a lot to there's, discuss there's about that. There's so much that. to talk about, but that was the one thing I was saying that whole drive is, Patriots won the Super Bowl because of a coin flip. Yep, yeah. coin so flip is over with. I thought that was a real big problem and a lot of people were questioning at the party I was at, but um, you know, that was my biggest problem. It's like, that's the Falcon season right there. It's heads or tails. And it, and it is. It's, yep. You get a coin flip and that's all, all it is. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, that does bother because you should get a shot. You should get a chance. You put in overtime, that's what you should get and whatnot. I'll tell you, it was an exciting Super Bowl. I was excited. I'm looking forward to the NFL draft coming up at the end of April. We will get into that in the beginning of April for one of our last final shows. We th I appreciate you yeah. filling in today. Thank Thanks you for so me. much for coming on the show and got, filling in. Got the hurry up call out on the bullpen. Hey, you know what? <laughs> we, we, we brought him in. It was a good end. All right, guys. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time here on Eagle Sports Insiders.